Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes, and I am going to help you make sense of this whole mess so that we can put our chargers on their own switch. I've been asked this a few times, and I've shown it in videos, but not in detail. So that's what I'm here for. This is the large helm switch panel. Fits right up in that top right hand corner. And if I hook this up to power, these two sockets are gonna be live without any switches on. Let me show you how that works. I unhooked my pigtail from the back of the switch panel. I've got a pontoon stuff wiring harness right here. I'm gonna take my battery leads. I'm gonna go ahead and hook these right up to a battery down here on the floor. So red to positive, black to negative. And I'm gonna take the console end, unhook that pigtail. And we're gonna plug that right into our switch panel. Plug it right in. Plug and play. Here's what happens when we do that. You won't see anything on this charger, but that's live. <laughs> Not doing it. But this is what bothers people, me included. We've got a great little USB charger there, but the second I plug my battery in or turn it on, or forget to turn my battery switch off, this is gonna stay on. It's a teeny little LED, I get it. But eventually, if your boat has to sit for a while between uses, that could drain things down. If you left something plugged into it, I don't know why you would, but maybe you did, definitely would drain things down. So I'm gonna show you how I switch these to a bottom switch to make it work better for my use. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up to turn on with this bottom left switch. Let's look at that. Safety third, let's go ahead and unhook our power source. So this is the top of the switch panel. On the back side, this is my USB charger. This is that 12 volt outlet. What I'm gonna do just to make things easier to move around is I'm gonna clip this zip tie. It's not doing anything special. It's just holding things together. And that's gonna free up this bundle wire so I can move things around easier. If we look at our power supply, that's gonna be this bigger red wire that's coming across. It actually comes in down low and piggybacks all over the place down here going between breakers and the accessory or the accessory power on, but it makes its way up here. And if we look right down in here, this is that 12 volt. We've got the breaker for the 12 volt right here. It's a 10 amp breaker. And then we also have a five amp breaker for the USB charger right here. That's the breaker down here. The way these work, if we look at this one, it's probably the easiest to see. This is power coming in to this side of the breaker. This is power, I'll cut this off so you can see it even better. This is power coming into the breaker and this is power going to the USB charger. If we trace this back, my power coming in to this breaker comes back across to this wire here. So it's piggybacked in there. So what I need to do is I need to cut it free from our navigation light breaker. It's sharing in right here. Can you see that? This right here. I'm gonna cut this one free, but I'm gonna get down, I'm gonna cut down in there as far as I can. And I'm gonna pull that power wire free. The best case would be to wrap this up with electrical tape here where I cut because there is still gonna be juice flowing from that and if a ground touched it, we'd have sparks and we don't want that. So I will tape that up before I'm all done. But now what I've created is basically I put my chargers on their own little power source. And it's all gonna be fed from this wire right here. So this, when I supply this power, it's gonna run power into the breaker for the 12 volt so that the breaker can then supply power to the 12 volt charger. And it also piggybacks across here to the breaker for the USB. 
and that's the power wire that's gonna power the USB. So essentially all I need to do is get power to this wire that I cut free from my navigation light breaker where it was piggybacked. Our aim is to use this switch to power those on, which happens to be set up right now as a live well switch. If you're not using the live well or that option, totally fine, just unhook it. If we look at the live well switch here, this is gonna supply power eventually to our USB charger and 12 volt charger. This is the power going out where this brown and orange wire are. I'm gonna pull this right off of that post. So that is free. I can use that if I cut this little bundle free. I can now reroute this brown and orange wire onto any of these accessory posts that I want. Pretty cool to have that option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run it onto this very last switch. If you look here, this is the accessory power out right here. So all I need to do is run this brown and orange wire down under, hook it up to this last switch on that power out post. Now, when I turn this last switch on, whatever my brown and orange wire are connected to are gonna get power. So back to the bottom left switch here that's gonna power our chargers. I need to get this red wire down to this power out post. Let's see if there's enough wire here to make that run. I think there is. Look at that. So I'll be able to put a splice end on this, a female spade terminal, and plug that right on here. Let's do that real quick. So I'm gonna need for this are my wire crimpers and stripping tool. We're gonna go ahead and strip that back. For I believe this is about 14 or 16 gauge. This is what that female spade terminal looks like. Our wire is gonna go into that side. And then that is going to slide over the male spade post for the switch. Yes, this is heat shrink, but you'll notice a lot of switch panel stuff doesn't use heat shrink tubing just because this should, in a perfect world, never get wet. We're gonna slide that right on. This is where that brown and orange wire was connected for that power going out from that switch. What I've done is this switch has already supplied power from elsewhere, from its own breaker. So that's already supplying power in. What I did is on that power out, I ran it to that wire that I clipped free previously to the breaker for the 12 volt, which piggybacks across to the breaker for the USB. And each of those breakers supply power to your charger. It's not as scary as it looked at first. Comment below if that rings true for you. Let's plug this in and see what happens. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Plug that in. With that plugged in, if everything's done correctly here, this light for the USB should be off currently, which it is. And when we hit this switch, the light will turn on. Do you want to do the honors, Corey? I do. Ta-da! What we have the ability to do now is power both of these with this switch so that at the end of the day, when it's time to leave the boat, especially if you don't have a battery switch, but even if you do and you forget to turn it off, as long as you as the captain turn all of your switches off so all those lights are off, you won't be draining power, we won't have any phantom draws, we won't have anything to worry about. There's always something else to worry about. So don't worry about draining your battery down with that silly little light being left on. That is how 
I configure these switch panels to work a little bit better and to be a little more fail safe because you all know we goof up sometimes, we're human. So why not prevent something silly from happening? Does that prevent cavitation? This has been proven in Corey's unofficial scientific studies to reduce cavitation by about 0.6%. River, do you agree? Maybe. Cavitation, do you agree? That's a yes. Got more. Thanksy, how about you? She's sleeping. <laughs>